So what's uh, what what immoral things is your company doing? Yeah, I don't think it's like necessarily immoral things. I think it's just like. I thought the whole pay thing was a bit uh, unjustified. Yeah, I mean, so it's like, for one, like you know, like you just gotta. To me, when you're doing things, when you're doing things right, like when you're when you're doing what's right. It, it, everything just works because of it, you know. Like so, say for instance, if you if you decide to pay your employees above average, you're you're not gonna have employees that are, or or you at least give them like raises like more frequently. Like maybe you don't start them off as over average, but like you give them raises more frequently. So oh yeah, yeah. Or, and your top out rates higher or something like that. Definitely. You know, so like if you making if you're making your your company more appealing, like I can't be like oh well, I'm gonna go fucking quit here and go work over there fuck this company right it's yeah i'm not gonna find another better job than this like you want you want your employees to say that about your that, that was one thing that was really positive about my last job at the gym is um uh in the mid- middle of working there it used to be you get a pay raise even if it wasn't super big you got a pay raise every six months then midway in there they decided to change it every year that's ridiculous yeah, and it was yeah. still the same amount of money it, it's not like the pay raise got bigger yeah that's ridiculous so they were cutting corners. And they probably weren't even huge pay raises, really. Either. No, no, they were like five or ten cent pay raises. Oh wow! Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, at a year at a year mark, they should be fifty cents minimum, if not dollars or two dollars. Well, yeah, I mean they're, they're they're borderline getting to minimum wage at this point, considering like everywhere is going up in pay rate. Yeah, and minimum wage is kind of climbing, even if it's not actually climbing. It's like it feels like it is. The minimum is yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, I remember back in, like, five years ago, like, eight, nine dollars an hour was, like, okay, better than... I mean, that was great. Yeah. And now it's, like, you're looking at everything's going to, like, 12, 11, you know, like, at a lower. Like, I'm seeing everything at, like, 12, you know, it's, like... Yeah. I don't know. I still haven't made it $12 an hour, and I'm pissed. Really? <laughs> Get all these different duties, and I'm, like, getting that pay raise. And see, to me, that's like, I don't know, like, I think that's crazy for a company of those sizes to not, not be able to pay out over $12 an hour. Like, I just don't, I don't get how they cannot justify paying over $12 an hour. Yeah, it's, it's weird thinking, like, the job I'm working at right now, since it's a pharmacy, I mean, pharmaceuticals, that, that's a very high dollar situation. Yeah, I mean. There's some people are paying up and close to a thousand dollars for the medications because they don't have the right insurance and stuff so yeah. you can't you know spare a little extra change for all the pharmacy techs that are leaving through the stressful environment like you got you got to reduce that turnover somehow and, and you might you might want to suggest bringing up the pay raise yeah because there is a very high turnover rate with the pharmacy is it yeah very high so do they have a doctor on staff or somebody who's like a pharmacist they have a pharmacist who's on staff which is like I'm sure they're probably getting paid pretty significantly well. I don't know how much they're getting paid, but I assume they're like getting paid a couple extra bucks. That's it? I mean, we're talking about, like, a six-year degree or, like... <sighs> Never really looked into it that deep, man. Really? I know they know more than I do. Because you'd think, you'd think, like, handling medications like that, there'd be somebody back there that has to... Like, has some type of, like, doctor knowledge or something. I mean, maybe not. Maybe to hand out I prescriptions. I don't know, man, like, because... Like, a lot of people that I work there count. with, they feel like they're doctors because they, I feel like one year, maybe a year and a half, they're fucking wizards with that pharmaceutical shit. They know insurance like the backside of their hand. Really? Man, that just, that blows me away still. Hmm. That's pretty crazy. I'm just, this is like, going back to the thing where, like, everything is just doing what's right it's like we you go going back to like the thing with like midwest motioners any company you know that if you with the whole finances thing and, and and paying your employees above average if you have employees that say i can't quit this job and, and make more money anywhere else people are going to have less negative you know thoughts about the company yeah. this is one small aspect it's like other things like don't do stuff like okay this is the first time we're doing this install we're having 
this guy order the parts, this guy building the machine, these other people assembling it. It's like everything's so compartmentalized that nobody's working together and collaborating on, on building this as a team. It's a bunch of individuals building it. Yeah, yeah, team team efforts always the better way to go. And um, when <laughs> like that's definitely how you want to feel like everything is being when you get a new boss too, because that was another reason why I left the last job. Um, I got a lot of final warnings as soon as you came in around Christmas time. That's it's a great time to you know ha have it feel like you're losing your job. And um, had me do maintenance job work and. And um, the guy I was working with, which I really enjoyed, and you know, I really uh, liked. He was an unusual fella, but I like him. And he was starting to get stressful being around, and he was starting to to make it seem like I was just a piece of poo poo, <laughs> you know. And um, that's just not the type of environment you want. And and like you said, the pay rate going up, like everything starts to matter once it starts becoming a negative environment. Everything. Yeah. Yep. You know, pay rate might not matter if the environment's so freaking amazing and so chillax and, and positive and uh, everything's teamwork strong and, you know, it's just a great environment. But once things start going bad, everything matters. Benefits, your, 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 how stressful life is outside of it and inside of it and, 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 and pay raises and, and the pay in general and, and your breaks and if everything starts to matter once you have a negative environment and yeah. bosses you better collect a check at that point yeah yeah it's like why am I even here yeah yeah I think that's I think that's kind of like where kind of where you know Midwest Motion's kind of gotten to is like everybody's there to kind of just collect a check and they're just waiting for the, th the thing to sink mm. like everybody just realizes that the people in place that are are running the company and the owner of the company they're just not capable and they're not capable of making decisions of well I need to step down and, and not do this because I can't seem to keep my hands out of things to like not make things worse you know like whenever it comes to like whenever like you're supposed to be the one in, in charge of ordering parts yet none of the or half the parts get ordered and like it don't make no sense on like half the parts got ordered but then double parts got ordered for this other thing it's like it just becomes a confusing situation and then the person that's supposed to be in charge of the you know doing that ordering process is then not really having any communication like you're trying to do this all via text and email and it's hard to communicate all this oh, through man. text and email and not that, even have any personal interaction with them that sucks so much when the person that you're supposed to be looking up to doesn't can't effectively communicate what you need to know um and like that's the big problem i have right now is like i, I would technically work two jobs at at, uh, at the pharmacy because i'm in front at the front store and the pharmacy so there's the lead pharmacist and then there's the store manager and i'm like i said i'm i'm, I'm worried about the pay i'm worried about the benefits and no one knows what i need to do they just try to signal me to go into the even higher up in the management go to hr Everyone's sending me these circles, and um, and eventually it, it keeps on coming down to they blame me for accepting an offer through an email when the actual store manager says that everything will be all right, he'll fix it. Well, obviously that's not the case because it didn't get fixed, and I got I got stuck with the the bill. You're supposed to look up to your manager and like be reassured that they can handle it and not that they're going to blame you for really their mistake I mean at that, at that point you almost feel like you should take their position because obviously you know what's right better than them because they're not even going through the effort of apologizing for the situation right. like, at least acknowledge you know that this doesn't seem right and, and it, like with the whole like doing what's right the negatives of not doing what's right can never Far out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is like just like they're devastating. They're destructive. They're just like the worst kind. Like it's like I'd rather do what's right and then get fucked over than not do what's right. And I mean, fuck everything over. Even if you, 
don't know what's right or wrong, nip in the butt as soon as possible, not six months down the, the road. Don't let it fester and boil into where it becomes a serious problem. Yeah. Nip any issue that you find out ASAP and, and don't just hope that it'll fix itself. Absolutely. I think that's kind of like been a turning point in my life because like I've, I definitely struggled with um, like saying saying things to people that like may have been like on my mind things that may have been festering inside of me but like I came to the conclusion that it's not right to let that happen that the situation just can get worse and get more negative for both of us and like or, or every, every party involved in the situation it's just by not maybe necessarily having to be blunt and maybe be a negative short come outcome kind of like with me taking my cousin's friend home last night you know that that was a situation that uh yeah it had negative side effects in the short term but it also set up a positive outcome for the future you know and it fortified like maybe worse or things not happening and having to go down a road that like is ultimately way more negative than just the bad feelings of what had occurred during that time yeah And so, like, this big thing is, is, like, it just really helped me realizing that doing 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 what's right is also not necessarily what's right in the short term or the long term, but what is what is going to cause more devastation if you don't do something? Yeah. And it's a lot of the time. It's it's hard to to face that and be like, I'm going to go against the current. Is the, e- the the wrong decisions are the, the easy way to go down the current because everyone's usually doing the wrong decision. No one wants to go against the current. Um, Everything is always changing, and and people aren't changing with the ways, and that's that's just not how life works. Right. Absolutely. It's like it goes back to like why does almost everybody hate their job? It's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It just going through this I feel like as soon as you turn that mic it's just like this podcast mode <laughs> kind of feel I like feel it. like I'm automatically in a podcast <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of feel like that does yeah it? it does it feels like it's a serious podcast conversation I should be on the radio right now <laughs> we, we could totally do it I am feeling it right now uh, what was your last comment before that uh Are you talking about something about jobs or something? You were about to say something before I started cracking on laughing. What what I said though? You said something about jobs, didn't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. So like, the I think also like the reason why a lot of or the reason why like most Americans like they hate their job is because they're not doing what's right. Like, they're like going to this nine to five knowing that they hate it every day. And, like, knowing, like, it's not the right thing to do, but, like, they have been conditioned by their parents or somebody throughout life that nobody likes their job and that, like, your job has to be this thing that you have to do versus you should be doing something you love every day and be passionate about what you're doing every day and and essentially doing what's right like that's what's doing right for yourself and because and it, like this goes like this like the, the domino effect of it is like what's so amazing is like the fact that okay you quit your job that you hate you go do whatever it is you're passionate about even if it's another just nine to five job even if it's a nine to five job you're making less money at but it happens to be something you're passionate for like say for instance if you just quit cvs and go work for a photographer for like twelve dollars an hour or, or not twelve dollars ten like this is a dollar less than whatever you make whatever it is you make it's a dollar less right two dollars yeah. less an hour right you're gonna take a pay cut but you're gonna take a pay cut for somebody who's doing like photography videography whatever and go work alongside them and even though you're making lesser money you're gonna enjoy your everyday life a lot better and just feel like more passionate about what you're doing and therefore like be more willing to give back to that person just because you're loving what you're doing every day you're loving your life and and then therefore their business their company or whatever they're doing is able to progress because 
you know, you're aligned, both of you are aligned with what you're wanting to do and just able to to then 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 it can that's where it trickle right back down to you where you made this person here successful and then they're like, Oh, well you know what? You know, you made this much money here, I'm gonna make you like lead, blah 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 and next thing you know you're you're getting paid thirty, forty, fifty dollars an hour, hundred dollars an hour, no you know, there's the sky's the limits. For next thing you know, you're fucking doing celebrity photo shoots. You know, went from doing weddings for, for you know, you know, five hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars for a wedding job, and then it starts slowly climbing. Next job's five hundred dollars. Next job seven hundred fifty. Next job a thousand. You know, and it's kind of keeps cl- climbing until you're doing like ten thousand dollar jobs, twenty thousand dollar jobs, and like, or or start building out your own crew. Now maybe like you have people that like either whether you're working for somebody or you end up working for yourself or whatever but there ends up being people below you and then you start training them in to kind of do what you're doing maybe just being camera people and you're kind of like coordinating everything in the whole photo shoot for like because you know this ten thousand dollar wedding or twenty thousand dollar wedding it's going to have a lot more going on than just one cameraman you know there's going to be a sound guy probably there's going to be all this shit going on where it's going to be like really shooting a film and everything it goes with all aspects of business all you know it's like I mean <laughs> along with what you're saying though um, with the the whole stipulation that, p- that people are raised to um, to believe that you're supposed to hate your job um, I mean even for like you and me it kind of still goes for that because we think of it as a side job and w- we're doing the side job, what we hate, just so we can do what we love. However, people are thinking of, you know, I'm just doing that so I can do what I love. Even if it's not like a career or whatever, it can be hobbies, you know, just spend time with family or whatever. But it doesn't have to be that way. Right. I mean, you can make the change and it can all be positive. It's just going against the current again. Yeah. You know? May have to put in a little bit more work right now, but... To try to accomplish both things, your passion and and still pay the bills. Yeah. And it's it's really it's really scary to go against the curve and uh and and multiple reasons like ours and stuff because we know that it's pain for our other other hobbies and you know you don't want to go against the current because you know you don't want to be out of the job and then you know be homeless. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's it's not just you know based on that that uh, that uh that that traditional mind thing. There's there's a lot of fears upon it because you know people don't like. I mean, at least we assume that people don't like people going against the current because. Because you know. Yeah, there are some people people who are not doing right. Yeah. People are not doing what's right. Like, like. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk, like he he always says that. They will they will get their people and train their people and go get them another job somewhere else. Like he's like, I don't care if Joe Blow wants to work for me for two years and and he comes to me and tells me he wants to quit, I'll find him a job. He said I'll I'll put in a good word for him. He said I'm not gonna hold anybody. But basically, you know, um, paraphrasing them, but you know, basically like their job is there is not to hold them back from accomplishing what what this other person wants to do because by that by not allowing them to do what they want to do they're not doing what's right therefore they're working for a company that they now hate which they're not going to put the effort in for and you know then you're just I mean in general it's it's internal really really internal good marketing too because if they go on to another job they're going to be like oh man that job was awesome and if like friends are, from that job are leaving you know, they'll be like yeah go to that job that's a great job yeah, you know, it, it it's it's great internal marketing. It's it's another way to get your name out. I mean, good always gets the name out better than bad does. Bad spreads out like wildfire. Yeah. Good doesn't spread as ba- as much, but it, it's still really I mean, it's it's good. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and it's like so. Say for instance, like if you ever work with a company that has not necessarily work for, but if you have interactions with the company, say for instance, you get a bad product, right? And you give them a call, say, hey, I have this bad product. And they, there's really no questions asked. They're like, okay, send us in your product and we'll uh, we'll send you a new one in. Or we'll send you back a new one. Or there's been times like, so I, I wear American Fighter a lot. Um, I called them before because they messed up my order and they had 
a bunch of the shirts were the wrong size. Gave him a call and said, hey, I just want to let y'all know that y'all sent me some shirts that are wrong size, whatever. And uh, they said, send us a picture of the tag saying it's showing the wrong size. Didn't even request that I send back the, the shirts or anything. Just sent me all new order. And then just dub redoubled the order. They didn't even... They didn't just send the two shirts back that they messed up on. They sent the whole entire order again. That's actually a really good reason why I enjoy Amazon as much as I have because as many times as I gotten like a UK version of a game, which when you get a UK version of a game, you have an American console, so it can't play that. Oh, really? Yeah, region blocks, which switch get rid of. Uh, so that happens. I keep the game, and they just refund me the money. Or they send me Oakleys when they were supposed to send me the remote to my camera. They keep let me keep the Oakleys. You know uh, that I'm I'm winning in that. I'm not winning what I wanted to, but I'm winning. So I just even though it was technically a bad experience, I still won. So it was it the good o- overran the bad. Yeah, yeah. And so like that customer service. Like whenever some you're like you're like. You have that negative feeling of, oh, man, i got to deal with trying to get this product back or try to get a new product or, you know, you got that stress weighing on your head and it's like you just call these people and they're like, okay, just let us know what, what size it was. Let us know what what the part number is. We'll, uh, we'll send you one or just take it to UPS. Here's a, we'll send you an email with a shipping receipt. You don't got to pay for nothing. Just da 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 And it's like it's just like taken care of and like just that form of customer service is like pretty awesome. Yeah. It, it's it's really little, but it it really goes a long way. Like, I, I mean, that makes it where I don't want to go to any other service because I um, I don't I don't feel like the the other I'm I'm not for sure how the other services would act, and I just Amazon's already done, treated me so well. It, and here's a primary example of this. This is a really really great example. So like I was always against bodybuilding.com. I feel like it was kind of a scammy commercial commercial um, ran company you know what I mean just very corporate and I had an experience where I was buying some protein powders I bought a bunch I bought like five tubs so like I think it was like maybe 250 300 dollars worth of protein right and the protein powders never came to my house they never they just never showed up and I called them about it I'm like yo what's going on like it says they were shipped and everything and they never arrived here and uh, just through that interaction alone I would now use bodybuilding.com like before like I I would have the only reason I used them is because they happened to beat everybody's price they beat everybody's price so that's why I went ahead and went with them like screw it they're cheaper than everybody I know the I already know the products I've already used those protein powders before it's the same brand as I always use it just happens to be from another company that I'm buying it from. So, uh, I went ahead and went with them. And then whenever I had this issue with my order being messed up and it never was received, I called them, let them know, and then they was just like, we'll send you, we'll resend you the order. I'm like, that's it? Like, that easy? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, y'all don't need anything else? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, and like, and if the other, and if the other uh, order ends up coming in, they're like, just keep it. I'm like, okay, cool. Did you get both both orders? I, I ended up getting both orders. <laughs> I, so it was like something weird, I guess that they they marked it as shipped, but then like I think the UPS person took it, but then delivered it like a few days later. Ah. So it was marked as shipped. Like it, like if I went on the side, it was like it it delivered. You know, and it said delivered, and so it was like. I don't know. He's like, damn, where my protein powder goes? Do you came. feel kind of bad for them? Because it wasn't even their fault. It was like UPS's fault. <laughs> yeah. <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they, they definitely gained a customer out of it, and they definitely gained the fact that I'll be able to talk good about them. Yeah. It's like before I had a very negative uh, outlook on them before. Yeah. Just because of... The vibe. Just the vibe, yeah. Just yeah. feeling so commercially, and I'm, I'm not really a commercial type of person. Not, you know... I care for more like a, a personal interaction with the business yeah. owner type of person, you know. Oh, uh, free loving and open. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the ideal environment. <sighs> that's the ideal environment that you know this goes forward pretty well. I'd hope that we uh, we create absolutely get like thousand 
company members, and you know, it'll be hard to, to keep it straight. But we'll keep it straight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's like, it, you know, a lot of people may not be may not be religious or anything like that, and yeah, you know, I'm not super religious myself, but like if you look at the Bible, there's ten commandments. You know, there's only ten. And then look at the United States laws. Look how many laws there are. Like there's like a countless number of laws. Yeah. You can't run a company the way the United States has laws. No. You can't have you can't have a hundred or a thousand rules to your company. You have ten rules and everything just happens to fall into those ten rules. Everything that happens to be a negative, you know any type of negative action. Well, uh sorta of kinda of like the same thing. Um I'm going to end up going back to Pixar anyway. Um, a thing that uh, Pixar, when they merged with Disney, um, Disney was trying to get Pixar to have all of Pixar's comp- uh, employees and everything sign contracts because they were weary about them leaving and you know being left out of you know having the experience, the the employees that they needed. Yeah, they and wanted Pixar- to buy the employees as well. They yeah, wanted they wanted energy. to make sure that they were going to be on for a year and, you yeah. know, and they wouldn't have to worry about them leaving. Pixar's look was like, no, no, I don't want contracts. Uh, and, and, and they had a good stance. I mean, because contracts makes, puts it, there's no reason for the employees to go higher up and contact them and vice versa. Because no matter what, they're, they're stuck in there for that contract. But since they can leave whenever they want and come whenever they want, they have to have communication. They both have to be pleasing each other. So, like, that free loving environment right there, that you can see the benefit. Yeah. Because you both have to please each other. So you both have the communication, and that creates an environment that constantly tries to um, take care of itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, going back to working as a team or just, you know, it's really what it's all about. It forces you to do what's right. Yeah. You know, if you if you have that contract where they can't quit for a year, you don't have to. It's right. Yeah, it's the easy way yeah. out, but it, I mean, you don't want the easy way out. Yeah. You want the hard way out. Yeah. Guess what? At the end of the year, when that contract ends and everybody leaves that day, yeah, because they're like, you know, screw you guys. Screw Our contract's you. up now. It's a horrible piece. Whereas the other way, the other way around is like never having a contract and everybody stuck around till the rest of their life, you know. And and and, and 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 when you say that, you know, peace after a year and stuff, you make it sound like, um, like, the employees benefit, but and no one's really benefiting because, like, if they leave and new people come in, you won't know why they left. You need constant feedback on both ends because you can stop them from leaving and you keep the company growing. You know? It just, you don't want boundaries. I mean, obviously, you need a couple simple rules, you need a couple guidelines, but n- nothing like a contract, nothing that makes you feel like you're in a prison. You want to feel like you're in a playground, but a playground that is actually getting good work done. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Could you imagine signing a contract that says you must do what's right? <laughs> you must do what's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the only contract. Like that's the only line of the contract. Man, sign here. I, c- I mean, at, at hindsight, you might think that's a good thing, but then you know, what is everyone's version of doing right in every situation that they come up to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is so big, right? And so, I think the the concept of it would be more of like a, more so joking, like yeah, but like in serious situation though, like in a, yeah, in a serious situation, like if the like the employees the employees' job is to do what's right, and vice versa, the company's job is to also do what's right. Yeah. And even if it is, I mean, like the thing is, is like. Doing what's right is like is always what's right. So, it, it, if if a company has to lay off employees, sometimes that's what you got to do. Like sometimes that's what's right because maybe it's you, what's right if you fight the dis, the decision and right. try to avoid it in every cost possible. Right. And you, be, you may you may have lost half your customers. You may have lost half your contracts with you know, all of your income sources coming in. And now what are you gonna do? Are you gonna 
try to fight a, bo- a battle that you can't win, knowing the whole entire time that you can't win this battle, yet you still try to drag it out as long as you can and not giving the employees any warning and then, you know... No, you definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. But uh, Pixar had a situation like that and all they simply had to do, instead of just doing like all the top management talking out and trying to figure it out, they got everyone in together. They, on one of the, the work days, they were like, no one's working. We're all going to get together in the building and we're going to discuss this problem so we don't have to lay people off in situations. And guess what? They got a lot of solutions. The solutions they didn't even know that they needed solutions to. You just got to keep that communication and you can accomplish amazing things. Totally agree. That Pixar book is it's, it's a really good book. Uh, it's a book you read? Yeah, I had to read it for my business class. Really? I'm glad I chose that book because it is really inspiring. Well, they give you they give you like an option of books to read or something. Um, the teacher um gave a big list of uh, books, and that was it said Pixar. No, it said Creativity Inc. and had Buzz Lightyear on it, and I was like, that's my book. That's, I know it's about film in some degree, and uh, man, it, it, it it's an awesome book. I mean, mm. this was a business class. It was a business class. Mm. Cool. <laughs> I can always let you loan it for a second or two. I'm not a read. <laughs> I'm not a read. <laughs> We're gonna have issues. You're def- I'm definitely gonna write uh, some some contracts for you since you can't read. I'll just let it say it'll just sign it. Just it says play all day. <laughs> play all day. <laughs> oh. Yep. I think this has been a good a good podcast, man. <laughs> it's it's definitely been a very big and uh, good podcast I think it's been you think it's been 30 minutes does it say it's been 31 31 31 minutes is that like a normal podcast I think podcasts can be about however long you want them (laughs) you're the the only one who's told me that I think Charles said it was 30 minutes to an hour maybe Isaac said maybe an hour to an hour and a half I would say as a general rule of thumb Really, probably anything ranging from fifteen minutes to like two hours. I mean, you think, if, especially if you're doing a live podcast. I don't podcast, think you want to do a podcast for fifteen minutes. I think it's too short. I don't know. I mean, if you're just trying to get a point across, like if you're just thinking about podcasts, are really good for delving into points, though. You can't really delve into a point in fifteen minutes. I don't feel like. Maybe not. But you could also do something fun with it. Like you have fifteen minutes to like, you know, knock out this topic. So like uh, one of the uh, influencers, uh, Peter McKinney, that I, that I like to watch, he does like a two minute Tuesday type of thing, and he tries to teach like some type of film, like filming or or some type of create or something in like two minutes, and tries to like just crunch it down in there. And so this is a cool concept, you know? It's a cool concept. I feel it's like gonna be fun to play with. I feel like all these memes that we've had, I feel like you you kind of wish that we had podcasted all of them now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I do feel like you you always take something away from these beings. Yeah, it makes it makes me a little happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel good about them too because I feel like you know I'm able to work with somebody that's kind of like on the same page as far as like being passionate and working towards something and like that's really like all that matters. Yeah, yeah, I, I I definitely agree with that. I love being able to find someone who's who's passionate and actually wants to pursue it and not just talk about it because you know some insecurity that they might not even know exactly what is yeah because I mean it really is the defining factor between doing and not doing is just the insecurity of you just not knowing and or really thinking that you can do it probably I mean it could be due to some tragic past like mommy and daddy issues yeah (laughs) you know I don't mean the kid by that but you know, it's, it's the it, truth. It's the yeah. truth. You know. Yeah. So like, it's just like that's a big factor why people don't go to the gym. Why people don't start working out. They feel like they can't go to the gym because they have like some type of fear of like they're already too fat to go to the gym. Like, uh, I guess they like people, some people just don't realize that that's the purpose of going to the gym is to go from fat to fit, or you know. And, but it's just the insecurities that they have within themselves of like, 
oh, somebody's going to like look at them, make fun of them, or and that's where the thing where really Planet Fitness has done a really great job at. Like they they targeted those type of people, they marketed towards those type of people who are overweight, and that's why they have the judgment free thing and like they really targeted your audience. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm really <laughs> kind of thinking that like we like like yeah definitely have a very similar audience. Yeah, the people who uh, who might be struggling. And, uh, and matter of fact, the CEO said that that exact thing. He said, he said that uh, he said, how do we go about doing this different than any other gym? And basically, they decided that you know we're going to target the people who are not even into fitness right now. That's a great way of thinking, and that, that's that's how you get shit done. That's how you get successful shit going. Is you know thinking about what other people aren't thinking, and thinking about the people that no one are thinking about. And um, sometimes it can be hard, and sometimes it can't. You know, like a lot of writer's blocks, and you know, just thinking about ideas and stuff. Uh, it it and a lot of times just takes throwing ideas and bounce them back and forth and be like, I knew this all along. Why didn't I just do it? You know? Right. Everyone needs someone to bounce the ideas off. I mean, you just need reassurance that, like, just someone be on the consumer and be like, be like, I get what you're saying and, you know, you're not half wrong, you know? And throw, it's just, you need someone to, to, to you know what I'm talking about. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm. Yeah, to share your brainwaves with, to share, to just share, you know, your concepts and your visions, and just kind of get some feedback on it. And, and I mean, that in itself, I know we're already past that point, but I think that is a way that people can get past that barrier of insecurities, is being able to team effort stuff, and to be able to, you know collab you know as far as like maybe get like what getting people like to work out together or like I mean that's you trying to say like that's a lot of it's a lot when I worked at Planet Fitness that's a lot what everyone's way of starting to work out was and what I tried to tell them is that's a good way to start but never rely on that second person amen because they will bail amen and you have to count on that yep. and you have to be willing to do it without them. Mm-hmm. So I even told my girlfriend, you know, absolutely. You you can go to the gym with your friend once or twice, but do not count on them. Yep. You have to be in it for yourself. I've been working out over two years now, and there's not a single person that has stuck it out with me any period of that time. And yeah. that's good on you. There's been multiple people who have like got involved with working out with me. Maybe hit like four, five, six sessions with me and gung-ho and ready to get into it next thing you know they're not answering their phone to meet up and i'm not saying it's a bad thing to to work out with your friends and stuff i mean if that's what you need to do to get past the insecurity of working out in a workout environment yeah. then by all god do it just do not let that be your crutch yeah just never so. never when you realize that there is a crutch get rid of it do get rid of the idea crutches do nothing but make you weaker I agree. And sometimes, sometimes that's the the idea of ins- and being secure of people seeing you look unhealthy. Uh, uh, it can be friends that can be your crutches, and you're around a group of bad influences, and you don't want to get away from them because those are the friends you've always grown up with. The only friends you know. Yeah. But. I mean, when you, everyone is better, like, even, I'm not saying the friends are bad, but they don't, if you can see what they don't see, then that puts you a step above them, and if you, if you take action, and go forward with what you see, and like, better yourself, they will see the same thing, and then, you know, it'll create, create a ripple effect, it, it, it just, as, as I, I said at the beginning, it, you have to go against the current in every situation, not just business, not just personal. In every situation, when you realize that you're going with the current, go against it. It's always the better decision. It's always going with right. Yeah. <laughs>